Hi friends, it's Deanna here today, and today we're working on the adult version of the Duke jacket. We're super excited about this jacket. I am obsessed with this pattern and I can't wait to get started. So let's do it together. <laughs> I'm really excited to sew this up with you all because I know that sometimes these type of sews can be a little bit intimidating. So I just love doing it together so that we can take it one step at a time and get over the fear of a more complicated pattern um, and then end up with a beautiful, beautiful jacket. So we're gonna get started with the tabs. Um, we have shoulder tabs, we have sleeve tabs, and we have a neck tab. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do them all at the same time because they are similar steps um, and get them prepped out first. That way we do the buttonholes at the same time for the tabs and everything like that. So for the sleeve tab and the shoulder tabs, you wanna grab two pieces, cause you got two of them, so there's four pieces, and we're gonna place them right sides together and going to sew around the whole thing up, over, down, but not the bottom. So we're gonna sew three sides and leave one side open. And we're gonna do the same thing for all four, two sleeve tabs and two shoulder tabs. Now one thing that you need to keep in mind is that they're similar and length and stuff like that, the shoulder tabs and the sleeve tab, they're just a little bit different. So you want to make sure that you keep them separate so that when you go to sew them on to your actual jacket, you don't get confused on what is what. So I like to go ahead and keep them, once I sew them up and everything, I'll, I'll pin them together with their actual pattern piece so that way I know what is what. And obviously if you like forget and you mix them up, you can always grab your pattern piece and kind of uh, remember that there is a seam allowance so you'll, you know, um, take off the seam allowance, but then you can see the pattern piece and which one matches with what. So I'm placing them right sides together and I'm sewing those three sides. For the neck tab though, there's only one of those, actually there's two, why did I say one? There's two of them and we're going to go ahead and sew around it as well. Alright, as you can see I kept them together so I knew which one's which. Then we're going to go ahead and trim our seam allowance mostly at those corners to redu reduce the bulk. And we're going to do that for all of them. And we're also going to turn them right side out. You can use any tool that you have to poke out those corners. I just have tweezers. I'm using my serger tweezers to poke them out. And then we're gonna give them all a good steam. So I'm gonna do that for all of them. All right, now that they have all been turned and steamed, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew a, um, a top stitch all the way around, one eighth of an inch, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my buttonhole one fourth of an inch away from the edge. Um, so if you want to, sometimes it's good to like fold it in half so you know exactly where the half is. Give it a steam and now I've got my line right there so I know that I have to put my buttonhole right at that line where my half is. A quarter inch away from the edge and then uh, along this line right here. So let's do that for all of them. All right, so I put my foot on, I put my little thing in the back, my button, hold, my button is back in the back. Um, I'm gonna grab my tab, I'm going to put it under. Remember, it's a quarter inch away, so I'm just going to put my foot and fit it in there. Make sure that you're in, that, in between that middle line that you created. And we're going to get going. And the machine basically does the work for you. And our buttonhole is created right there. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same for all the other pieces.
Alrighty, now that those um, tabs are finished, I'm gonna put them aside and we're gonna move on to our well pockets. I've got my fabric right here. I've pinned everything to itself, like all the pattern pieces, I've pinned them to my fabric because I just wanna make sure that um, I've got them all in order. I don't want to mess up because there's, some of them are similar in shape, like the inside zipper pocket, it's similar in shape to the welt pocket and stuff like that. So you wanna make sure that you keep them separate. That's gonna be key for you to get this correctly. Okay, once we've got that, I went ahead and the pattern piece and I cut out the area where the marking was. And I'm gonna grab my welt pocket. This is one of my outer pieces. Well, this is my welt pocket piece. <laughs> Anyway, and I'm gonna put it the outer side down because I wanna draw this on the wrong side. Can't get my words out. You all know I have a hard time speaking. Um, you can use any kind of water soluble. This is a fabric water soluble um, marker. Uh, you can use anything to mark it with. Sometimes I actually like to use pencil um, because it's very faint and you can't see it on the other side. So I think I might look for a pencil because I'm a little bit afraid. Um, sometimes water soluble markers don't always come out and I don't wanna be able to see it. As you can see, I did it right here on the top and you can see it through the other side. So if for some reason, I mean, this is not gonna show, this is gonna be like, I think on the inside it, when you finish it out, but still I wanna be careful with what I put on my fabric. You always wanna try it first. You always wanna try it first before you do it because if it doesn't come off, it, it might ruin a garment that you finished and it looks great and then you have marker uh, spots everywhere. So I'm gonna go find a pencil and I'm just gonna use that. All right, I found one. I have a 10 year old. So the finding the pencil was the easy part. The hard part was finding one that actually had some, that was actually sharpened because they're all dull, broken, and I could not find a sharpener. But I found one. So I'm marking the pocket, I'm marking that um, area that's marked on my pocket uh, piece, pattern piece, and I'm just marking it onto my outer, but on the inside piece. See how you can barely see it and you can really not, you. You can't really see it on the outer edge, on the outside. So that's why sometimes I rather just use the pencil because I just don't want those lines to transfer through. And I don't remember, I have used that marker before and I think I've been fine, but you know, being that this is a, you know, off-white coat, I wouldn't want to have blue lines all over it. So I'm just like a little bit nervous about the whole ordeal, so. Better safe than sorry. All right, so the markings are on there at the top and we're gonna place them right side up. Markings at the top. We're gonna grab our pocket facing and we're gonna put them at the bottom. Okay. Right sides together at that bottom raw edge. So the pocket marking is here at the top and the pocket facing is gonna go here at the bottom. I didn't do a very good job stripe matching this one I did better on I did good on this one but not on not on this one but that's okay now we're gonna go ahead and sew them together right here all right so now that that's been top stitched we're going to open it up this is the wrong side and we're going to steam it down then I'm gonna head over to my sewing machine and just do a top stitching in place to top stitch that uh, that seam allowance right there. I'm gonna go over and just top stitch it really quick. All right, so now I'm grabbing my under front bodice. This is my under front bodice. And I cut out that little piece marking where the wall pocket's gonna go. And I use that cutout to cut out some interfacing uh, to add. I'm getting my iron ready to put the interfacing on. So then I'm gonna grab my bodice move these well pockets over to a little bit and I'm going to mark my bodice the front and the back where that well pockets gonna go so make sure that you line it up correctly and you're gonna mark it okay and then I'm gonna mark the back as well and then I'm gonna add that I'm gonna mark the back and add the facing to it the facing interfacing to it interfacing Put that aside, grab my interfacing, place it over the marks. 
The interfacing is good to have for, um, to give it more strength. Now, I made my interfacing, I used this, but I made it a little bit bigger so it sits, so that the stitches will get cut on there. You don't wanna make it smaller because you want the stitching to, um, to it, you wanna reinforce the stitching. That's what you want the pocket for. I mean the interfacing for. Okay, so then now I'm going to grab my pocket and I'm gonna place it right on top where that marking was. And I wanna place it right sides together and I'm going to have this shape, this rounded shape is gonna go towards the inside of the bodice, the straight is gonna go towards the outside. So, actually I'm gonna bring this back up here to help me place this placket. So if I put this on correctly, then I should be able to move my placket to fit where it's supposed to be at. I think that is pretty close. And then now I can make sure by just kind of lifting it up or whatever you want to do to be able to know what it is. But I like to do that. I like to put my pattern piece on top so that it line so I can line it up together. And I'm gonna grab some pins. I'm not sure what my pins are, but I found two. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna go to our sewing machine and sew around that rectangle, a straight stitch. You wanna use a smaller straight stitch um, so it's nice and tight and even. And we're gonna go all the way around sewing that on once I find my other pins. All right, so here we have that rectangle. We're gonna go right in the middle of the rectangle. So let's mark that middle of the rectangle on both sides. And then I'm gonna go at half an inch from the edge, half an inch. My ruler is faded. So here's where my half an inch is. Okay, and then from that half, from that mark, we're gonna draw one straight line to make them attach them together. There it is, and then I'm gonna draw a line coming out to each corner. There's one. There is the other. Okay, so now I'm gonna go with my scissors and I'm gonna cut across that line and then over those two sides coming right up to the to the thread but not cutting the thread make sure you don't cut that thread at the edge and we're gonna go through both the uh, the well pocket and the front um, the front piece okay now they're all done and now we're gonna fit that well pocket through to the wrong side and we're going to give it a really, fold it all out and give it a good steam. Now, if you're having puckers here at these corners, then that means that you didn't trim enough. So go back, turn it around again, and trim it again a little bit there at those corners and those puckers will go down. All right, now once it's been pressed really nicely, we're gonna fold this front piece, the rounded piece over, so you can see the wrong side of it. So you can see right here, this is the wrong side. We're gonna grab our ruler and we're gonna measure an inch and three quarters, an inch and three quarters. Now, when you measure an inch and three quarters, that should literally come right at the edge of your pocket right here. See that edge right there? It should come right at that edge and it does. If you just run your fingers like this and kind of give it that crease right there, you see when you measure from this line, whoop, there went my ruler. When you measure from this line to that line, it's a uh, it's an inch and three quarters. So that literally, all you gotta do is just kind of, with your nail or whatever, crease it. Because that's where we're going to go. That's where we're gonna mark it. Um, and we're going to fold our pocket over right there and give it a crease. Because that is going to be where your, um, this is gonna be your welt pocket, like your closure. So you don't want it to overlap. You don't wanna overlap it, you just want it to come right up to it, like butt up to it, just like that. You see that? You open it up, 
you close it right up to it. If you open it up this way, there's my crease. Looks a little crooked. Yep. Let me make sure it's tight enough because I didn't tighten it enough. There we go. That's what you need to make sure. You want to make sure that you do a good crease. Sometimes it's good to go ahead and measure it out. I was just kind of like, hey, I got it. No, I didn't get it. There we go. All right, so there it is. You open it up and it's right over that line that I had created earlier. There it is. We have the pocket. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna turn it and when you turn it to the right side, this is my welt pocket, you see that? So now I'm going to top stitch around the outer edge. Do not catch my pocket though. We're just top stitching the outside like that. So what I wanna do is I wanna either pin or clip these down so that this doesn't lift up and move because I do want this side basted and this back basted and that top, not this lip right here. You don't want that sewn. So you wanna top stitch around that. Alrighty, now that that pocket, this is the back, this is the front, if you can see. You, it's a nicely top stitch welt pocket and we go in right there. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab our liner, our bag, and place it right on top and we're going to sew all the way around. Make sure you're not catching anything other than the actual pocket and you're sewing all the way around. Now, I'm going to do this on my serger. The reason why is because I want to catch all those little threads and, and sew them together. But you can do this on your sewing machine as well. But I just, I just want the cleanness of the serge edge on that and that's why I'm doing that. Um, you could definitely also go sew it on your sewing machine first and then go back and uh, finish off the edges with your sewing machine on a zigzag stitch or with your serger, however you want to do that. While I'm at it, I'm also going to grab my back piece, my outer back piece, which is cut uh, mirrored, two pieces mirrored, and I'm going to match them up and sew that back seam. Again, I'm also doing this one with my serger. Um, and you could do, like I said, go ahead and sew it first with your sewing machine and then do with a serger to reinforce it. But because of the fact, and you really don't even have to reinforce it because you are going to have a liner, um, so it won't rub on the skin as much. Usually if I'm sewing something woven and it's going to the seam allowance, the seam is gonna rub on the skin, it's, it might fray easier. So you wanna make sure that you finish those raw edges. This one, it probably would be okay, but I'm just going to do with my serger. I just like using my serger, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Let's do it. Look at this weld pocket. Just remember when you're, co when you're cover stitching, when you're um, serging, if you are serging, remember to just move everything out of the way. You don't wanna catch that. Um, look at it. How beautiful is that? I love it. All right, let's put that aside for a minute. Let's grab my back and I'm gonna open it and steam that seam. And if you want to go back and top stitch from the outside, just do a top stitching line on the back so it looks really nice and neat, you can definitely go and do that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to or not. It kind of, top stitching, I might, I might do it because top stitching gives it like a very high end look. So it gives it like a really nice finished look. So if you want your jacket to look really nice and finished like, you know, an ex very expensive jacket, that is something that you might want to do. All right, so now we're going to do our hanging loop. I love this little thing. Um, so I'm grabbing, I'm doing the fabric version. You can use some ribbon or, uh, um, cording or whatever you want to use you would just cut it um, the pattern has the size on it and I don't I can't think of the top of my mind what it's the size is but I'm using the fabric one so we're just gonna make that and I'm gonna fold it in half wrong sides together and then I'm gonna bring my two sides into that middle piece it's kind of like we're creating um, some binding or something like that and then I'm gonna fold it down the middle again so now I've got this um, 
little thing right here. And then I'm gonna top stitch it all around and then this is gonna be my hanging tab once it's done. I'm gonna top stitch it and then I'm gonna attach it to my liner in a minute. Uh, but I love this because all the time you go somewhere and you want, you don't know what to do with your jacket and you just wanna hang it somewhere. Um, so if you can just find something to hang it from, you have this little tab, you can just hang it from anything. Um, I have like uh, hooks in my laundry room where I like to hang my jackets. And sometimes it's just easier to just hang it from that tab. Um, so I love that option. So let's do that. I'm gonna top stitch and I'm going to top stitch this down as well. Alrighty, now for the hanging loop, we've got, we're gonna grab our liner. This is my back liner. And when I cut out the pattern, I made these little notches. I just kind of went up and out, up and out where the mark was. So I would know exactly where they were. And I'm going to fold them so that they match right sides together. Now, if you did not do that, that's fine. All you gotta do is grab your pattern piece and mark where that little notch is. And I'm going to mark my spot right here and then I'm going to open my back and flatten that out so that the two corners go in and meet and I'm by corners I mean like the little points that I created the marks so when you match those two together and you fold them down they match up together come on and makes like that little pleat right there. There we go. See the little pleat right there in the back? So now you've got this pleat right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a little steam. Ah, my iron turned off. Okay, let me put the pins there first. And then you can go ahead and base that together first. And then we're going to attach the, uh, the little thing to it. Hold on. I'm giving it a little steam. All right, so you can go ahead and base that together first if you want. I'm not, I'm just going for it because I am a rebel. We're gonna grab our loop and we're going to twist it on itself like that. So it kind of makes this little loopy thing. You can grab it and like twist it like this. This is the backwards version. Anyway, and then we're going to place it right on there. So like when you pull it up, it'll be like this little loop like that. And we're gonna sew it on. And this is the reason why you baste it first because now it's gonna be harder to keep it aligned. <laughs> And then you're just gonna sew it on there, on your the on your liner. All right, friends. So I know I didn't say it, but um, you will repeat the steps for the well pocket on the front wrap over uh, side. So because you, you have well pockets on both sides, so you will repeat the same steps on the other side. And I did that. Look how good that looks. I am obsessed with well pockets, they are gorgeous. And you could even do that with a different color, like a standout, like a black or contrasting color to give it a little pop. But I just wanted to continue with the same color. You also could have cut them to, you could grab your front bodice and, and put it on top and then kind of cut it out of that. Um, so you have the lines going the same way if you wanted that. But I do like the little bit of the contrast that it gives it on this one. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and place the first thing we're gonna do to the front wrap over, I think it's the one that wraps over the front, yeah, wrap over, um, is you're going to grab some interfacing and it's gonna be the length of, it's gonna be two inches and the length of the front. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I cut it the length of the side. I thought I cut the long length, I don't know. I guess I cut it the wrong length, so I'm gonna be adding more to it. You gotta cut it the length of the front where the buttons are gonna go, the buttonholes and everything, um, so it reinforces the fabric right there. Um, so after we do that, after I cut it out right and do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what the next step is. We're gonna grab our back outer and we're gonna grab our fronts and we're gonna place them right sides together. Remember, here's the arm side, here's the arm side. So this is the shoulder is gonna go on, right sides together and sew them together at the shoulders. 
So you're gonna grab both sides and sew them at the shoulders. All right, I grabbed more interfacing and we're placing it three eighths of an inch away from that edge. So you're gonna leave a little bit of uh, allowance right there, three eighths of an inch. And they are cut, the interfacing is cut um, two and a half inches by the length of your top. So le let's do that and then we'll sew those shoulders on. And remember that's for both sides, for the wrap over and then the, the one that goes under. You wanna put them on both sides because one side is gonna have the buttonholes and one side is gonna have the buttons. So you need them for both. Alrighty, now we're gonna press open those shoulder seams and then we're gonna head over to our sewing machine and we're going to put a stay stitch around the neck, the whole neck area. Um, you know, even with wovens, they can tend to kind of stretch out as you're sewing them and kind of get misshapen. And you don't want to do that because you want everything to fit just right, especially when you have a liner and an outer and everything like that. So a stay stitch at the neck, it's really helpful to help with that so it doesn't come apart. Um, and really it's just a big straight stitch, so like a basting stitch, basically. So we're gonna go around the neckline and put that basting stitch all the way around the neckline. And then after we do that, we're going to go ahead and sew our sides together, right sides together. So I'm gonna match that up because I can pin it, I clip it now and then do the basting stitch and then do this. And I realized that my lines don't match and I thought they were going to, but they don't, that's okay. Also don't catch your pocket in there. Make sure you move it out of the way when you're sewing. And we'll do that for both sides. And then we'll go ahead and grab our lining pieces and do the same thing that we did with our outer. Um, the shoulder seams, then the basting at the neckline and then sewing the sides together the same way. See this side, the stripes match. The other side they didn't work so well. That's okay. I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to line and thank goodness for that or I would be in trouble. Let's do all that. Alright, in case you were wondering, I took a little break, painted my nails, and now we're back at it. So if you're like, why are her nails pink all of a sudden? It's because I took a break. You did not imagine it. I had no nail polish and then now I have nail polish. Oh, that's the beauty of recording a video. You can take a little break uh, while you're working. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on that zippered pocket, that inside pocket. This is an extra option if you want to skip this step, you can, but I think it's awesome to have that inside pocket where you can add, you know, something inside of it. It's like a um, hidden pocket. Um, so we're going to grab one of the sides and we're going to grab some interfacing and we're going to put, put, boop, boop, boop. We're gonna put it at the top um, on the wrong side of one of those because that's where the zipper is going to go. And you know interfacing is great for reinforcing so that the zipper is not going to fall out after you did all this work. Put my iron aside. Then we're going to grab our liner. And I'm going to figure out where I want that pocket. Where would you want that pocket? Do you want on the left, on the right? Do you want two pockets? You make two of these if you want. I'm just going to do a pocket right here and then figure out where exactly you want it. You want a lower pocket, a higher pocket. I don't think it really matters to me. I think I'm just gonna do it like right in the middle. I'm not sure. We're just gonna go for it and see how I like it. Um, you can check out like other jackets you've made or other jackets you have that have a pocket and figure out just exactly where you want it. Um, just, I'm gonna stay away from the edge, obviously, so I'm gonna put it like right in, in the between the two pieces. I'm gonna face it right side down on my liner where I want it. And then I'm going to, actually before I do that, I'm gonna grab my pattern piece. If you can see this little area I cut out, I'm gonna mark that. 
um, because the next few steps are going to be kind of like um, when we did our welt pocket earlier where we did the little uh, a little air the little rectangle and then we went uh, sewed around it and then we sewed across it uh, sewed around it then cut it and then flipped it around that's exactly what we're going to do with this so we want to make sure that we mark um, our, our pattern piece that way we know exactly what we're doing. So now that I've figured out where I want it, I'm going to pin it to my fabric. Again, this is my liner fabric. It's right sides together and it is, um, situated wherever, wherever you want it to be situated really. Um, and we're going to pin that. All right, now I'm going to grab this middle piece. Oh, let me grab a ruler. All right, remember when we did the um, welt pocket, we went a half an inch from the edge um, of the rectangle we drew, and we drew a little spot right there in the middle, in, in the middle of these two edges. Make sure to close that out. And then now we're going to match those two dots together, so like a straight line right here. So there's this line right here in the middle. And then we're gonna go from that point over to the one edge, the other, and then the other, and then the other. So that's four, right? So what we're going to do now is we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew around the rectangle first. And then we're gonna clip, cut that line right here and cut up and over, up and over, but don't cut the thread. Remember we did that for our wall pocket. So let's go do that. Okay, now that that is sewn around, as you can see, then we can go ahead and do what we talked about, which is cut right through that first line. So I'll just kind of clip it and cut straight. And you're cutting both layers. You cut in the pocket, that pocket you created, and then the liner piece. And we're gonna go to that point, and then we're gonna turn and go right to the corner, but don't cut the thread. Now remember, you need to go right to the corner, because if you don't go right to the corner, then you might have that bunching there in the corner that you don't want. All right, so now once I did all that, I'm gonna take off these pins, and I'm going to flip it all through that little area to the wrong side of my liner piece. So flip it over right here and we're gonna steam it make it look all nice and straight now remember if you are having a hard time and you can't get this to settle down right here like you have all these little bumpies after you iron it and everything after you steam it and everything then you want to go back and clip those threads a little bit more that means you didn't clip enough so I'll start by steaming on this side first and then steam it on the other side and get it nice and straight. All right, now we're gonna turn it to the wrong side again, and we can go ahead and actually pin the pocket down again on the other side. That way it doesn't keep lifting up on you. And we're gonna get ready to put the zipper in. So I've got my zipper right here and my zipper is super long because I did not have the right size zipper, but that's okay because we'll just cut, trim the zipper down. That's fine with me. So we're, we can use some, I have like some steam seam. Um, you can use some double-sided tape, uh, sewing tape or uh, whatever you have. And you don't even have to use this. This just helps to stick that zipper on there when you're going to sew it. Um, if I give it a little bit of a steam, it's like it, it tapes the zipper down when I'm gonna sew it, so that way it doesn't move on me when I'm going to, when I'm sewing. I said that same thing over and over again, when I'm gonna sew it, when I sew it, when I'm gonna sew it. So that's why that comes in a little bit helpful to put that in there. So then I'm gonna grab my zipper and I'm going to place it right over that zipper tape. I mean that tape that I put down. Oh, this one lifted up. And we can turn it around and look at it from the other side and make sure that it fits nicely, that you have it securely how you want it. So it's the zipper is right in the middle. Let's turn it around. Okay, so see how it's too far down? We want the zipper to be right in the middle. So we're gonna fix that. 
All right, and there's my zipper. That's what it's gonna look like. Then um, I can give it a steam. Be careful that you're not gonna burn your zipper. So it's just very lightly. And then it's like my zipper is stuck right now. Ooh, not all the way, but I'm still gonna put some pins in here. Okay, and then whoop, I'm gonna go over there and sew it on. All right, my zipper is pinned. Make sure that it's even, and then we're gonna go over there and sew all the way around to encase that zipper in there, basically. This is my zipper pocket. Now, um, one thing that makes this so much easier, makes um, attaching a zipper, is using a zipper foot. Now, your machine zipper foot might look a little bit different, but this one, it goes this way, duh. And so what it does is it keeps this, like, it lays on top of the, like, against the zipper, and so that the needle doesn't get on the zipper. So it gives you a guide, so you can kind of run it along the, alongside the zipper basically. So I'm going to put that foot on. I know sometimes we're scared of zippers, but zippers are very, actually very easy to sew on. Um, they're not very, they're not super scary, but they, they do still seem kind of scary. They are scary. They're still scary. Anyway, all right. So once I put my needle on and I'm actually putting it over to the other side right here and then I'm gonna it's gonna keep my I'm gonna keep this edge of my foot against it because I'm kind of putting my zipper farther out um, you're gonna see more sometimes you put your zipper really close so you want to use the inside I'm using the farther out because I'm putting my zipper a little bit farther out I'm gonna keep my zipper right my zipper foot right over my alongside my zipper. And we get to the zipper stopper, you can lift up your foot and move your zipper stopper down. And then keep going. And then we're gonna do the same on the other side. And our zipper is sewn on. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go flip this to the back and trim our zipper. So obviously my zipper is was longer, like I said, so I'm just going to trim that excess off that I have that I don't need. And it shouldn't go past those sides because you sewed it closed, so it should be good to go. I'm gonna grab my other piece of fabric and I'm gonna face it right sides together and then we're going to actually, mm, yeah, and then we're going to um, sew that together. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, you can sew it with your sewing machine, you can sew it with your serger, whatever you wanna sew it with. Um, this is gonna be on the inside of your jacket, so I guess I probably wouldn't worry too much about the fraying but I am going to go ahead and sew it on my um, sewing machine. I mean on my serger, because then it finishes those raw edges just because I like to do that. So we're gonna sew all the way around and we'll be done with that zippered pocket. When you're sewing this on, don't catch the pocket, just the, just the, um, the liner pieces. Don't catch the liner, I'm sorry. All right, so our zipper pocket is ready and done. Here it is. And then we're gonna go ahead and work on our sleeve. So I'm gonna put that aside, that pencil aside. We're gonna grab our sleeves and um, let's do, cause we have liner, outer. We have two liners, two outers, a tag. I don't know why I have that. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my outer sleeve and I'm gonna grab my pattern piece 
and I'm going to, well, I have all my markings. Now, when I cut my pattern piece, I went ahead and marked all my, where the little lines were. I just did like a little notch up on all of them. So I knew where they were. So I didn't have to like clip, but if you didn't do that, you can grab some clips and mark it. Um, and then using your pattern piece, we're gonna grab where here, where our tab goes. Here's this tab placement. Uh, make sure I am doing the right thing because I want the right length. And I'm gonna grab my sleeve tabs that you, we created earlier. And I'm going to place them right on that marking. Right on that marking and we're gonna base them on. So we're gonna do that for our sleeve, our sleeve um outer sorry i couldn't think of the word on both sleeves so we're gonna put the tabs on both sleeves mm -hmm. make sure they're in the right spot i'm going to place it there and then we're gonna baste it on then like i said i have already marked my pieces on here so i can go ahead and grab I'm gonna show you in one of the main sleeves. So here's my main sleeve. This is my front area, this is my shoulder area, and this is my back area. And we're gonna grab the side sleeve. Yeah, this is the B. So this is sleeve A and this is sleeve B, you know, the one that's like got this little thin piece at the top. And I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna place it right sides together so that that little piece at the top, the little tab, starts right where the back mark is, where the, where the mark is for the back of the sleeve. And we're gonna place them right sides together and start pinning along that edge. All the way down. Kind of try to line up my marks, but my, um, line up my, uh, uh, What are they called, my lines? That's really easy. Line up my lines, but I didn't, so. Mm. All right, and then we're gonna sew that, and we're gonna do that to all of them. So the two liners, I'm gonna do that A and B together, and then the two sleeves A and B together, sew that and baste this. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to go from that back point right here where I started, all the way to the front point right here, I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and put a long straight stitch so it'll be like a gathering stitch. So that way I can um, then gather the sleeve a tiny bit to fit into my arm side when I go to sew it onto my jacket. Um, and then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to match the fronts and sew it right sides together, the front of the sleeve, like so. Um, so, I can do one at a time or, you know, sometimes I like to just do everything at the same time. It's up to you how you wanna do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip it right now at the same time while I'm at it. Because I think with clips, it makes it so much easier to be able to do that. So let's do that for all of them. starting at the back and I'm going all the way around or starting at the front or the back whatever that mark is and then I'm gonna go all the way around the top of the sleeve now that our sleeves are prepped we're gonna go ahead and grab our outer and we're gonna grab our shoulder tabs we can use the pattern piece and figure out where the shoulder tabs are gonna go that edge of the shoulder tab is going to touch the edge of the shoulder seam but it's gonna to go towards the front, and then the raw edge is going to be touching over here where the arm side is. So the side of the jacket. And you can go ahead and base that on, and we're gonna do that for both sides. Now I'm going to also put a pin on this other side because I don't want it to lift up and kind of get caught when I'm going to sew the sleeve. So I'm just gonna put a pin right there too. 
And then now, whoop, whoop, you can go ahead and baste it on first if you want. I'm bad, I don't baste things. It's so bad, it's not good. And then I'm gonna turn my um, liner outer, this is my outer, but I'm gonna do the same to the liner too. Turn it right, wrong side out. I'm gonna grab my sleeve, I'm gonna turn my sleeve right side out. And I'm going to fit my sleeve into my arm side, making sure to match. So like this is the, like my pieces should be still marked. So I still have these little tabs that I marked it with. And so those should mark, mark, those should match with my arm side. So I'm sticking that in and I'm gonna ma match. Oh no, this is my back. So this is the wrong sleeve. I'm gonna use the other sleeve. And I'm gonna match the back, the notch where the back is with the back, the notch where the front is, here's my front, with the front of my um, my shirt. They should all match. Come on, get in there. And then this is the notch for the armpit area, the arm, arm area, armpit area. And they should match. So I'm gonna match the notch with the back and the front. And then for the top of the shoulder, hold on, let me pin these down or clip this down. All right, so now I'm gonna match the top of the shoulder. There's that little piece right there as well. And I'm going to pull that gathering thread just a little tiny bit so that my sleeve fits comfortable in there. So my sleeve fits in there. And I'm, again, it's just, it's just, you're just pulling just a little bit on that, on that um, bobbin thread so that my sleeve fits in there and we're just gonna pull it a little bit and so it's flushed right sides together, the sleeve and the arm side, right in there on both sides. And now, and then once you've pinned it all, oh my goodness, my clips just keep flying away from me. And then once you've pinned it all, like so, so you can see right there, then we're gonna go ahead and sew it. I'm gonna do that to all of them. I'm gonna do it to the liner, the sleeve to the liner, and then to the other sleeve, to the other side of the sleeve. All right, once you've attached those sleeves, you wanna make sure that you steam out your liner and your outer, all those seams that we've already created. It makes a big difference when you steam, it kind of helps everything sit nicely and makes it look a lot better. I have this little thing right here that um, it's actually really good for like steaming seams and stuff like that, so I like to use that. Um, but you can just like roll up some towels or something and put it underneath there to help you steam out all these little seams all the way around. So we're gonna do that for the liner and the outer. All right, once you've done steaming, we're gonna grab our color pieces. We're gonna grab some interfacing. It's cut a quarter of an inch smaller than your color piece. So it's just, it fits just, I think I cut this one. I need to trim it a little bit. You trim it a quarter of an inch smaller than your piece. And then we're going to uh, put it on. All right, then we're gonna grab our color and put it right side up. And we're gonna grab our liner or our outer, whichever that is, and put it right side down on top. And we're going to sew the sides and up the top, kind of like the rounded area right sides together on my sewing machine. All right, now it's time for our color. We're getting so close to being done. Well, no, it's not time to put it on yet, sorry. We're gonna grab our color and we're gonna trim those corner pieces. 
and you can train some of the seam allowance and then we're gonna flip it around all the way and steam it all right so now that I turned it right side I uh, mean out wrong side wrong sides together right side out I don't know what I'm saying. I'm gonna grab my jacket, I'm gonna place it right side up on my mat, and I'm gonna go about, it's like three eighths of an inch off the edge. Um, you wanna be able to have that seam allowance there for when we sew the jackets together, you don't sew over the color. And we're going to work our jacket all the way to the other edge and put it three eighths of an inch at the other end as well. And then we're gonna clip it all the way around. right sides together at the raw edge. Well, I say clip it, clip it, I'm clipping it now. And you can go ahead and baste this on to the to the um to the outer because what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our liner and we're going to place it right on top and we're going to grab the right side of the liner and we're going to put it right sides together right on top and we're going to attach them. Now, the liner goes all the way to the edge. <clears throat> the color doesn't. So they should match perfectly. There it is, now we're gonna go ahead and sew it all the way. All right, now with jackets still right sides together, we're gonna go all the way around the front and match my outer and my liner and then around the bottom so we're gonna match them together and we're gonna sew them all up leaving we're gonna leave a gap at the bottom of the jacket way at the bottom down here um, to turn the jacket right side out so we're going to sew all the way around and leave like, about a four inch gap at the bottom four to six inches depending on how thick your jacket is if you're using a very thick fabric um, and it like it's really bulky you want to leave leave more room live you want to leave more room because um, Then you can f flip it around easily. You don't want to have to you don't want to tear it um, So it just depends but we're gonna make sure that our sleeves are in there and don't catch your sleeves or anything like that We're just catching the bottom and the sides All right, let's go so All right, y'all, we're almost done. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna pull the sleeves out. I'm gonna pull the sleeves out to, through the arms, 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 pull those arms out. So once I pull the liner and outer sleeve out, I'm gonna place the pattern basically right on my mat. Here's my one sleeve, my outer, and here's my liner. And I'm gonna face them together Make sure that the sleeve doesn't get rolled up. Sometimes it wants to roll, so make sure they're, they're nice and straight. I'm gonna grab my right, my outer sleeve, and I'm going to fold it up. And really, the only reason I'm folding it up, you can fold it up however much you want, it doesn't really matter. It's so that I can fit this one right side over it, on top of it. So see, so the right side of my sleeve liner is touching the right side of my sleeve outer because we want to sew it together now so i mean that's the only reason why we're folding it so it doesn't really matter how much you fold it now you're gonna match those seams right here here's the one seam and then right sides raw edges touching all the way around the whole sleeve and then we're gonna go over and sew them together and do that for both sleeves Make sure, you, again, make sure your sleeves are not turned um, because you don't want them to get tangled up. And then after you sew them, you find out that they're tangled, turned, or whatever, and then you have to take it apart. And your tab, your sleeve tab, move it out of the way so it doesn't get sewn in when you sew it. So again, I'm just turning it out so that when I fit my sleeve liner onto it, they touch right sides together. Y'all, this is it. We're gonna sew this. Then we'll turn it through that gap that we left at the bottom. We'll sew that gap closed. We'll top stitch 
we'll do our neck tab and our buttons and we'll be done. All right, time to turn it all around. So carefully through that gap that you left at the bottom, we're going to flip our jacket all the way out. Your sleeve should look like this. See how my sleeve liner is in there and my outer just kind of, they're both sewn together right there. Then I'm gonna steam that down and everything and it's gonna look really good, really good. I'm so excited about this. Here's my pocket, my zipper pocket. All right, now I'm gonna stand up and give this whole thing a good steam and then we'll go back and top stitch all around the outside edge of it. And we'll also, well, you know, I forgot. Shoot. Ah! I forgot to tell you to trim the corners, the excess fabric at the corners. That's why my corner is being so hard right there because it's got this extra fabric right here. So don't forget to do that before you flip it all the way. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to go back and top stitch around the whole jacket. So like all around the edges and the bottom. And then um, when you're top stitching, you're going to grab where that hole is and you're going to turn it right side in, right sides together, and then top stitch it closed as you're going around the whole thing. All right, let's go top stitch. All righty, friends, we're basically done. So now we're gonna grab our bodice, the one that uh, um, wraps around. So this, this is the shorter, this is the long, the wider, that's the one that's gonna wrap around the front, like so. And we're gonna grab our neck tab and we're going to place our neck tab at our neck with the button right, well, I mean, right sides together with the button closest to the top. So we're gonna place it just like this. And we're going to sew that neck tab right sides together right here. Then we'll flip it over and then we'll tack it down like so. So we're gonna place it, we're gonna sew it about a quarter inch from the edge. All right, friends, we are basically done. I just need to go back and add all my buttons and my buttonholes uh, on my um, jacket. I love that zipper pocket right here. Look at how cute that is. I love the, um, the uh, what are these called? I just drew a blank on the pockets. Well, pockets, I think they look adorable. I think this jacket is just super cute. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I think it's super cute open as well and it will be super cute close once I put the buttons on. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't because my flap is flapping around because I haven't done my buttons yet. Um, I hope that this encourages you to take it one step at a time. You can do this, you can sew it up. Um, just take your time, um, sew it up with me, go check out the tutorial, which is awesome as well. Some great tips on there. And I can't wait to see what you create. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time. Bye.